So patients with atrial fibrillation have an increased risk of cardiac thromboembolism and need oral anticoagulation to manage that risk. But we have a challenge when a patient's had an acute coronary syndrome or needs uh, percutaneous coronary intervention because in those patients there's clear evidence base for dual antiplatelet therapy with aspirin and a PTY12 inhibitor. And so there's an indication on the one hand for an oral anticoagulant and on the other hand for dual antiplatelet therapy. And so what we've tended to do is combine the treatments into triple therapy. But the challenge here is that we know that incurs a high bleeding risk when we combine triple therapy. And what has been the gap in the evidence is knowing whether we can cut back, just use two agents to manage thrombotic risk, both the risk of cardiac thromboembolism and the risk of stent thrombosis or further coronary thrombosis. And so this is the real challenge that has led to a lot of uncertainty in the community as to what the best regimen of antithrombotic therapy is for which particular patient. There have been many large studies that have looked at the role of non-vitamin K antagonist oral anticoagulants. We've got a number of agents now, apixaban, rivaroxaban, dabigatran, edoxaban, and these agents have all in their large phase three trials shown superior safety compared to vitamin K antagonists, predominantly warfarin. And particularly there's a lower risk of intracranial hemorrhage with the NOAX compared to the vitamin K antagonists. And this has led to increasing adoption of these new agents, which have some advantages also in terms of not needing regular monitoring of coagulation in order to um, you know, set, a, set a dose. The doses are determined according to uh, renal function and other clinical characteristics. But most patients, uh, the majority of AF patients, requiring a single dose of these uh, NOACs in order to achieve superiority compared to agents such as warfarin.